important note. These standards that we have just been talking about involve only the level of progress intended by the IEP. The IEP is a forward-looking document. Nobody can predict the exact progress a child will make in any given year. None of us can do that. So these IEP standards are about the reasonable expectation of, of what is being offered by the IEP, not about the progress that the student made the year before or even during the course of the year. Reasonable expectation of progress appropriate in light of the child's circumstances. If you have been sitting back, relaxing, this is the moment to sit forward and join me. This is the most important slide of the entire presentation. I am a parent. I was a teacher. In my heart and my soul, what I want for these students is the best education out there. I want the education that allows these students to meet their potential. But as a lawyer, I cannot argue for either one. I live inside that red box. The standard of the law is not the education that would be best for the child. I have a colleague who says best is a four letter word. That would be best for the child. It is also not the education that is equal in opportunity to the child's non-disabled peers. That is not the legal standard. So when you are in an advocacy situation, when you are in an IEP meeting, when you are writing a report for a parent, I would like you to be able to shift your vocabulary from the best education, from the child reaching the child's potential. I would like for you to shift your vocabulary to this legal vocabulary that we are going to talk about. If I make an argument in court about the education that would be best for the child, my argument will be thrown out. I must argue with these pieces that you see inside the box. I'm going to go through the pieces once just very generally, and please watch along with the screen as I do this. I'm going to go back and do it again with a, an example more specific to dyslexia. When we are live and in person, I ask brave people to volunteer to try and do this out loud. Sometimes it's hard to learn until you go to do it yourself. I hope that you will take the time to try and do this yourself. These are how the pieces it together. This is what it sounds like when lawyers argue on behalf of students with dyslexia. Dyslexia is a specific learning disability under the IDEA. Therefore, a student with dyslexia is entitled to a free, appropriate public education in the least restrictive environment. An appropriate public education is one that meets the child's unique needs prepares that child for education, employment, and independent living, and allows that child to make progress that is appropriate in light of the child's circumstances. Take a moment, look at these pieces, absorb them. I'm gonna do this again, except that I am going to do it with a very, very specific example. Here we go. My client is a child with a specific learning disability known as dyslexia. Dyslexia is recognized under the IDEA. Therefore, this student is entitled to a free, appropriate public education in the least restrictive environment. First of all, this child has been placed in a classroom with students who have profound intellectual or cognitive disabilities. These students in this classroom have a modified curricular content. This student with dyslexia has exceptionally high cognitive abilities and therefore the classroom into which she has been placed is too restrictive for her in violation of the law. In addition, 
an appropriate education for a student with dyslexia meets that child's unique cognitive processing profile. In order to prepare this child for future education, employment, and independent living, this child needs a multi-sensory, structured, sequential, evidence-based approach to literacy. Without it, her unique processing, neuro neurological processing profile will not be met, and the child will be left functionally illiterate. Functional illiteracy does not prepare a child for education, employment, and independent living. Therefore, the whole language program that the district is offering cannot be considered an appropriate education for this child. It will not allow this very bright, very capable, high cognitive testing child to make progress that is appropriate in light of her capable intellectual circumstances. That's me doing this off the top of my head as 